Mike, turn your games down. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another film episode of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Hubbard, and who's flying through the sky with me tonight? Uh, this is the crown prince of psychological abuse, Kenneth Sanity. And I am everyone's favorite bird brain, Joe Butler, but please call me Joe. <laughs> and welcome. This is your first Batman episode, I think, that you've been on. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here because I also really, really love Batman. <laughs> I have another person to get for Batman episode. Sweet. We, we do a lot of Batman on this show also because we like Batman. Who doesn't like Batman? My wife. Yeah, I like people. <laughs> What? <laughs> Doesn't like Batman that much. Oh, come on. Oh, it's, it, it's a spouse thing. I really love Batman, but my husband really hates Batman, so. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so. Now, that's kind of funny, though. So we are here to talk about a movie that I have not seen for a while. Uh, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, which is the only Batman Beyond movie that came out in, or only Batman Beyond movie. It came out in December, uh, 2000, and the uncut version yep. came out in 2002. Correct. Which I'm pretty sure I watched the uncut version, which I didn't even know there was too, because when he died, he got shot. So, yep. The edited version came out December 2000, December 12th, 2000. Thanks once again to everybody's favorite American pastime, uh, Columbine. And oh. because of Columbine, this got a lot of edits. In 2002, the uncut PG 13 version was released in 2002 and everybody was like oh that's good i didn't know that <laughs> i didn't even know there was a different version until just now when i was reading wikipedia before this episode oddly enough the edited version is slightly more disturbing <laughs> <laughs> what are the main is it just the way he dies is the main change well some scenes were just cut out to cut a lot of the violence so instead of seeing the violence you just have a lot of off-camera screaming and oh. some of that off-camera screaming is horrifying. Okay. Well, sometimes, I mean, it is a horror thing where what you don't see is sometimes worse because then your brain is creating it versus whatever the person had in, intended. Yeah. I prefer the uncut version. It's only three minutes longer, but it's still great. Okay. And I, I have very little background with Batman Beyond. Like, because I know, I also thought it funny because they, they make a comment that's how it's 40 years <laughs> After whatever happened, what they talk about mid mid movie. So in the forty years, technology went from Batman the animated series to Batman Beyond <laughs> technology. Yeah, I mean we go from Art Deco to cyberpunk dystopia. That's fine. That's how it works. I'm I'm always a fan of like how like whenever stuff's like oh we're gonna be like forty years in the future and a lot of it's just like shit that doesn't really make sense. But <laughs> I like a lot of it. It's it's very of its time, like two thousands and. All kinds of other stuff. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Like, I like the technology. I just thought it was just funny when I was thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they were 40 years doesn't change that much. But that's a TV show, so it's fine. I, I'd like to think that if we had Bruce Wayne in, in like, our universe, that's what, for, that's what we would have looked like in 40 years. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy with the Bruce Wayne adaptation and how he looks and everything. Like, that makes sense and how Barbara is in this. And I mean, the only thing that's very, I think, very interesting about this before we get too too far into it is that you know Batman Beyond is takes place in the same in the same universe just years later with a lot of the same characters and I'm assuming in the in the cartoon or in the show it kind of like focuses on who's alive and who's dead from his list of villains I'm assuming I mean it's mostly new villains but every once in a while somebody uh new will show up doesn't necessarily you know there's like occasionally a new like version of like your older weirder one-shot villains but this was like the first time that they acknowledged like okay it is the return of the joker not the return of a joker so this was kind of a big thing my uh my, my favorite plot line for this for batman in batman beyond in general is i always think like kind of like now of course a bunch of gross teenagers would be like you know who was a really cool guy back in like 40 years ago <laughs> The Joker. Let's all just put on a bunch of clown makeup and just do crimes. Oh, my God. Because that's something that very much would happen. Yeah. <sighs> so, I, I, so I, like I said before, I didn't know a lot of, about Batman Beyond going into this movie. Like, I didn't realize that this actually took place right, right after the first season. So I thought maybe this was like an end to Batman Beyond. Like, this was like the final thing to say, you know, to see it out. But it's not, which is cool to know. Oh, yeah. Because season yeah, two. Like they had was in progress at the time this came out. 
Yeah, they had a lot of great stuff on this show. This was one that was super interesting to me when I was, you know, watching this as it came out. I wanted to say when I was growing up, but it was like, hey, you were 19 when this show came out. So, um, but hey. I was a kid when this came out. I remember being a kid, a lot of kids my age were very, had very mixed reviews on this show. And it's it's, it's funny because it's still the same thing. People have problems with it now, which is the suit. I like What's suit. wrong with the suit? The suit's fine. The suit's fine. I had no problem. Like, you know what this reminds me of? Do y'all remember when Marvel had their 2099 universe? Yes. Yes. Like, this is very much feels like Batman 2099. Hmm, that's a good way to put it. Like a stripped down costume, completely different person beside the, or inside the costume. You know, the aforementioned cyberpunk dystopia. This very much feels like a 2099 comic. And I love it because I love those comics. Death Battle I, has a Batman Beyond versus Spider-Man 2099 episode. Ooh. That would be cool. I like both those characters. I, I actually yeah. really wanted to buy the first appearance of Batman Beyond in comics, but it's way too damn expensive because I was at a convention not too long ago where the voice actor for Terry McGinnis was at. And I was like, I'll buy the comic, get him signed. And I'm like, yeah, 100 bucks. I'm like, no, thank you. I actually think it's cool that they continue the Batman Beyond in comics because it answers a lot of questions that they don't address during a kids TV show because there is a a run where they do explain what happened to uh, Damien, Damien Wayne. So the comics are pretty cool. That is cool. That fucking that? punk. <laughs> <laughs> we got we to gotta cover Son of Batman one day. Uh, we do not have to cover Son of Batman, that entitled little shit. But I anyway, like Damien. I can't stand him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just because I'm not old and with it. But uh, nah, something about Damien Wayne just ruffles my feathers. I know. That's why we bring it up on the show. <laughs> I know. Do you guys just like hear me call him a fucking punk? <laughs> <laughs> so the way this movie starts off, too, I thought was pretty interesting because I the Joker gang, they're from the show, I'm assuming. Correct. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I have. It's a I, new I, faction of the Joker's gang. Oh, not the same people that would have been in the show normally. No, they couldn't afford these people normally. Oh, <laughs> OK. Uh, like it was, I mean, that's how it starts off. It starts off the movie with you have the Joker gang breaking in and stealing something. You don't really know. You don't really know what's going on. You have a fake scarecrow, a fake Harley Quinn twins. I don't even know what to consider the other guys, but I did laugh when I saw the fake scarecrow. I'm like, ah, I bet, I bet Ken was irritated with that. No, I wasn't irritated. I just didn't think that they had enough to do. So the gang consists of uh, Bonk, which is your you know resident strong guy. A voiced by punk rock impresario Henry Rollins. Uh, you have Woof, a genetically modified hyena person, boinked, or voiced by uh, Frank Welker, who does a lot of animal voices in cartoons. Uh, you have Ghoul, the scarecrow wannabe, uh, voiced by television's Lex Luthor, Michael Rosenbaum, doing a very inexplicable Christopher Walken impression. Well, that's cool. It's weird. <laughs> Uh, you have Don Harvey playing Chucko, the requisite fat henchman, but the only one that actually seems to get stuff done. And then you have Melissa Joan Hart, television's Sabrina, the teenage witch, playing the twin sisters of Dee Dee. That's cool. I saw her name was in here, but I didn't see who she played. But OK, that's cool. So that's what I mean. They couldn't afford them normally. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the weird things that I, I wrote in my notes here because I was writing notes while watching the movie. I like to think like this also has a very taken a lot of stuff from the Dark Knight Returns, the other series where Batman's an old man. And the only thing that they use a little bit of, too, which I wish they would use more in cyberpunk future stuff where they make their own language of knockoff cussing. Like, I think I can't remember what they say in this, but it's something ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Batman's got a ton. Batman Beyond has a ton of those kind of expressions. I think one of them is sway. I love love things when they're not sway. That's an exceptional. <laughs> the lingo in this movie was funny too. Like, like go slag them. You know, just the fact that you had to put something in di- to make it different because you know it's forty years later. I thought that was hilarious. Oh, yeah, I mean, as an English nerd, language is constantly evolving and changing shape and blah blah blah. 
So in 40 years, it's 100% understandable that we would have different kinds of slang. Even just look at the way people talk on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh, they're kind of dumb, but it's 100% understandable. But it was it was funny, like just the way that they fight and you get to. I mean, even in this first fight, it does a really good job of showing the Joker gang, showing Terry how he fights, how he navigates in his suit. And I do got to say, damn, that suit is cool. It's just like everything that kind of happens, like you have the twins seem up on him at one point. I actually do like the two twins. I thought they were pretty hilarious the way they are. Yeah. And he gets his ass beat pretty good by these people. I felt like throughout this movie, whenever they fight, even, you know, like he doesn't do very good against, against, I mean, they're not, they're not like superhumans or anything. They're kind of normal. I mean, hyenas not, but the rest are pretty normal. And that's something that's, you know, throughout the entire series, he's not the powerhouse that Bruce Wayne is, but he's also more clever. But you, like when you see them flying above the city, all I could think of is, man, I wish we had flying cars. Like that just yeah. looks so cool. So dangerous though. Like, I mean, thinking to myself, like, you know, this is not very safe as they're, like, <laughs> causing all this damage and everything, trying to escape. And they're idiots where at one point they have, like, the, hook, the whatever the hell they're using to carry the satellite type thing. And they just, one guy just, you know, disconnects and chases after them. Like, you guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah. But what a time. It was cool. I really liked the way it did it. I just like the, the way, way they, they fight a lot. Yeah. The fight scenes are very, very well choreographed in this movie. You can you can tell that Terry's not trained as a League of Shadows member, but like you could still tell the kid takes goes to the gym or spends his night at the gym every other night, making sure he knows how to land a few bunches. Oh yeah, like he's like you said, he's definitely not League of Shadows, but he can still fuck somebody up. <laughs> yeah, he's not he's, that good. <laughs> he has more of like a uh, a street fighting type style. Like he learned how to fight on the streets. There's nothing particularly disciplined about his fighting. He does what he can, what he does to get the job done. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Sometimes he's good at it. Yeah, and sometimes he's not. <laughs> also, sometimes it's not his fault because during that first fight, he gets tasered, and I'm like, why no bat suit, no taser proof? Because like, <laughs> there's a lot of iterations where Bruce knows better and is like, I should probably put some rubber in this damn bat suit to keep myself from getting tased. I have a theory about that. Could it be bunnies? No. Okay. It's not bunnies. But it good of... call the Buffy musical episode there. <laughs> Every time people say I have a theory, that's what comes to my mind. Every time. But I feel like maybe tasers are just very outdated technology. And it's possible that nobody was like, oh, yeah, tasers are going to be a thing you're going to run into all the time. Yeah, but I feel like maybe he should have been more prepared for that. Well, yeah, probably. But it's not Terry's fault. It's Bruce's <laughs> fault. It's usually Bruce's yes. fault. Which does sit well. I mean, Bruce is kind of an, an idiot at times in this. It's the old like, age. Yeah. A lot I mean, of this. Fits, he fits how, how I think Bruce would be at this time after everything he's went through, especially when you think about the animated series, Bruce, and you look at like, you know, and the fact that what he went through was Tim Drake, like it fits how he how he acts in this movie. Yeah, I never thought about that. That's a good point. Yeah. He's kind of a butthead. And it's like I like to mention many in my episodes we do, they mentioned title screen right about this part after you see the gang escape and they pull the chip out of that, whatever the hell that thing was, and blow it up. It was a uh, communications array, I believe it was. Uh, and this is when you first see the Batcave also, which I I really like seeing the Batcave in this. I like seeing all the trophies all over the place, which are, you know, references from the old show. And I think Scarface's doll is in there because you got to think about it. Since it's been 40 years, multi people are probably dead by now, one way or another. Like they they're done. All his villains. Oh, yeah. So this is where my bat fan's going to show out out of everything in that cave, out of everything that's there. There is one thing that is not there. And I very specifically do not like that. It's not there. And it's the fact that there is no reference to Jason Todd in this movie, as usual with most of. Well, OK, let's let's walk through this here because you're not wrong, but this is also 40 years after the Batman, the animated series continuity ish in ish. that area. So by this time, that could be chalked up to the fact that Red Hood's out there doing his thing. Bruce knows, and he doesn't need to have the shrine of Jason Todd anymore because he knows Jason's alive. Yeah, but like, I, I know they skimped out a lot of Jason's Todd stuff back, back in the Batman animated series. I want to say there is a canon 
there's a Canon Batman animated series comic, which does have a Red Hood introduction. And there is a Canon design for a Red Hood for the Batman the animated series. But I still haven't gotten that yet. And I don't think I ever will in my lifetime. Probably not. I mean, it is a little intense for a, you know, children's series, right? Yeah, but they, uh, I mean, the, the Batman Harley Quinn movie is made for a more mature audience. So, I mean. Oh, yeah. I mean, and look at uh, the Under the Red Hood movie. I love that movie. <laughs> oh, that movie's so good. It's yeah, great. I really want to cover that. <laughs> Let's cover that, Mike. We will. It's not part of the, yeah, we probably will soon because I, I haven't seen it in years and I really want to rewatch it. I just rewatched it. It's just as good as you remember. <laughs> I'm wearing my only thing that I could find, which is the only piece of memorabilia that they have, which is a Red Hood Arkham Knight shirt. So, ooh. Uh, I also I kind of laugh when you first see uh, Terry. He goes to the club, and just the way the club looked, it just made me laugh. I was thinking to myself, well, that's very unsafe. There's no railings. You could just fall off things. How you could just take your feet and push something right off to, and, and you know like but that's what went through my head when i watched it for some reason but it was cool you know how i know you're old mike <laughs> yes <laughs> when you look at a club and you're like whoa that's unsafe those children are gonna get hurt <laughs> you know how you, you know how well this movie's aged when you look at it and go yeah rave still exists nah. <laughs> no they yeah. do you just don't get invited to them anymore that's fair <laughs> no they're still around raves haven't went away you just yeah I've only been to one rave once, and there was no drugs. But, you know, so it probably wasn't the same as it would have been. It could have been. Oh, no. No. Also, it wasn't a club. It was some guy's house, and you just turn off the lights and put a strobe light on, and then they were had glow sticks. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Look, pal, you ain't been to a true rave unless it's in the warehouse district of a large city, and the cops come and break it up at about three, 3 in the morning. Yeah, no cops came. That's a rave. So uh, with the rave, I think it's weird because you can tell this was also had a bunch of old fogies behind a desk <laughs> with the writing for Batman Beyond because Terry McGinnis is a senior in high school, which is really weird because like I feel if they had just bumped him up a year and he's like, oh, he's 18 in college. It would have made more sense. Yeah. And you, it, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the TV series as he goes because a lot of stuff happens at his school. So you could also still have the a lot of the school setting just to have him at college, but no usual Batman Bruce Wayne knowledge. Let me hire this kid that I found who needs my help. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize he was in high school. I wasn't sure what age he was exactly. He seems more college, <sighs> but high school. Meh. He, he, over that a, Peter Parker thing. He's an eighteen-year-old yeah. senior who his parents bought him a motorcycle. Yeah. But in true Spider-Man fashion, his dad dies, and then he has to become the Batman, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, and, then, and then right after this, you see the Joker hideout for the first time. And I thought this was kind of, I mean, yes, every, you know you know the title of the movie, but they do a good job of hiding the Joker at first. where You, you hear his voice, you hear Mark Hamill, they got back, and you see the red eyes, and then it's a little bit before you finally see the Joker emerge from the shadows. And, and like you're like, the Joker's alive? That was, I thought, very, very cool. I, mean, I knew he was because that's the name of the movie, but I still liked it a lot. And we should talk about this design of the Joker because it is a different design. I don't like He's it. wearing like <laughs> a black bodysuit. His hair is slicked back. He looks like Hannibal Lecter. And yeah. I got to tell you, that's working for me. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. And I'm what the sure. hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've recorded enough with you that I know you like stuff like that. Fair I'm enough, not a fan of the enough. look. I, I mean, I, you could, it's one of the things where there's always too much and too little. And, like, I don't really think the Joker would wear a suit because it's supposed to be, like, 2030, 2040, <laughs> whatever year this is. But, I mean, it, it's a it's an understandable look that he would go for, especially because it's, like, they, they think it might be an imposter. So it's, like, who could the Joker be? It could be anyone's. So let's not give him an outfit that looks like anyone's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... I get it. I thought it was pretty cool. I I like I, it. That I, I it's diff- it. it reminded me a lot of ba- of Joker from is it New Fifty Two. I know he cuts off his face, but it just kind of had that same look. It reminded me of that with the shorter the shorter hair. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Doesn't he have short hair in New Fifty Two at some point? Uh shortish. Yeah. Okay, it's been a while. I think it's Endgame. Yeah, I think you're right. And he's got like a shaved head in Endgame or something. Anything's better than the Gotham version of Joker, where he has like five strands of hair. Ugh. What is Gotham? What are you talking about by Gotham? At the, Gotham. the live action. Yeah. 
Oh, the Suicide Squad movie? No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, yeah. the card. Okay, I know what you're talking. Never mind. The Gotham yeah. show. I forgot that existed. Oh, we all yeah. do. No, hey, I don't. That first so season Harvey was Bullock really good. If I, when, I, when I first watched it back when it came out, and then I fell off and never went back and have no and keep telling myself one day I will and has not happened yet. So I'm we'll still see. pissed off at their fat erasure making the penguin a skinny little bastard. <laughs> Come on, man. Fat people have so few villains. Just let us have the one person who is always canonically chubby. Hey, you know what, though? They fix that because they make him gay with the Riddler. So, I mean. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, that. Of course. How foolish of me. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, I've have n- never gotten that far, and I, I think I'm good with that though. Gotham won those. Sh- I forgot. Yeah, like, I completely. When you said it did not click at all, like I because I never got to when the Joker showed up in Gotham either. But it wasn't I funny. that's all in our conversation. Yeah, yeah. This I'm, is when you then get to a dinner event at Wayne Enterprise, which I thought was cool to see. Like Bruce Wayne is still trying to be in charge of his company. He's like, I've worked years to get back control of my company. I think myself. You're old as shit. Like, aren't you in your 80s? Like, just what are you doing? <laughs> but, yeah, but he's also Batman. It's also not that far fetched. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people who run companies and who shouldn't be there who are way too old and delusional, but they're there. That's just what we do. Yeah, but it just feels like, you know, Batman, Bruce Wayne would do a bet, uh, better job of. <laughs> All right, you can edit this out, Mike. I can't. I need to answer this. <laughs> sure, and I went this out. So for those that don't know, which everyone is not us, Joe just posted a picture in our chat of what the Joker looks like in Gotham and completely just stopped. Kenneth, he couldn't even talk anymore. He just killed him. It's what terrible. the fuck before. is this? I'm sorry. Gotham gets really off the rails towards the end, and that's that's the final Joker that you only see in the final episode. <laughs> oh, my fuck? God. Yeah, he it looks ugly. like looks like Donald Trump. <laughs> That's accurate. What the fuck? Well, this Joker's not fat enough. True, but the hair, the hair's yeah. bad, and the face. Oh, oh my god! I kind of gotta watch this show to see what kind of justification they give this. If if you want to, the the this is the it's the very last episode. You don't have to watch any of the series because nothing in that episode happens. Like involves any canon and it's just the joker kidnaps i think gordon's kid again for the unteamed time and then you see him fight you don't see batman but you know he's there and the episode ends with the kid that plays bruce in his bat suit which actually looks really good and then the episode just ends oh well, were that's they planning to do a spinoff or something and they didn't get money probably okay makes sense it ran for a few it ran for five seasons yeah and there's probably a reason why it didn't get a sixth that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so back to the movie in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So Bruce Wayne is taking control of the company again. He's edged out Jordan Price, who is going to take over the company. This is an important thing because Jordan Price should have been the president, but now that Bruce is coming back, he's not. And man, does he kind of look like he could be the Joker? I'm also pretty sure he's voiced by Mark Hamill. Oh, like he like when that dude came on TV, I'm like, that's Mark Hamill. He sounds like Mark Hamill. Well, let's check that out. But in the meantime, let's keep going. I'm trying to look it up right now, but it's not going too well. <laughs> yep, you're right. It is, he did Joker and Jordan Price. Uh... That's cool. That's a good like throwing because. Again, you have someone who has the motive because they say throughout this movie, Joker's dead. Like, he's dead. He ain't come. He's gone. Like, we know he's dead. You know, they mentioned it. I don't think we got to that part yet, but they do mention it multiple times. Barbara says the same thing. Like, he's dead. We saw him dead. And he's dead. Like, it ain't him. And it, it does a good job of that. Like, you know, it makes sense that it would be somebody like Jordan Price because he's someone who has a lot to gain by getting rid of Bruce Wayne. And when the Joker's attack at the dinner event, when Bruce Wayne is like, they try to kill him almost, it seems, and steal stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the attack is just a a diversion, essentially. But, oh, man, when Bruce Wayne sees Joker like that face, like the look that they did, like the way that he just like breaks down. He's like, it can't be you. It can't be you. Like, it's so good how much it like it triggers him and affects him and makes him really question everything all of a sudden because he saw his arch nemesis, who, arch nemesis who's been dead for years, 40 years. And as soon as this all gets fixed up and, 
you know, the Joker absolutely comes back. Terry wants answers. So he goes to <laughs> Commissioner Barbara Gordon. I like that. <laughs> who won't give him answers. Bruce won't give him answers. And Bruce eventually tells Terry, okay, you're done. Give it back. Give the suit back. You're done. You're over. You know, that reminded me of a Spider-Man movie with Iron Man in it, you know? I, I was just going to yeah. say that, like, <laughs> Bruce tells Bruce tells Terry, the suit is not you. It's, it's something about the Iron Man, that, what he says to Peter in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> If you can't be Spider-Man without the suit, then you don't need the, then you don't need the suit or something like that. Yeah, something like that. If you need the suit to be Spider-Man, you're not worthy of the suit or I don't know. Typical oh. Gen like baby boomer nonsense. <laughs> well, in this case, of course, you need the suit. He's a normal guy with no powers and no abilities other than he can put on a cool suit and he can fight with it. Like That's he a, has no abilities. It's a very expensive suit though, because like in this movie, it kind of gives you a taste of what the suit does. There's he has like a listening on his fingertip and he can turn invisible. So that's a pretty nice suit. So it's kind of is if, <laughs> the, the suit makes me Batman, Bruce. That's it's no other way around it. Well, yeah, no, it, it does. I mean, like he can that's because Batman is the technology. If you take away. I mean, yes, he's intelligent, but this is a kid, 18 year old kid. This isn't like somebody, you know, like Batman who's trained and fought and learned this. This is a kid. <sighs> so uh, we kind of it, it happens before this, but it's fine, though. During before this conversation, though, of the I want my suit back, you small child, you lost sassy child. There's the the meeting between Joker and his new lackeys who. Oh, yeah. He hired and uh, he kind of muscled his way in and took over the gang. I mean, if a dude walks in and says he's a Joker, and he looks like the Joker and he's terrifying. I mean, yeah. And you're a bunch of gang of idiots. Makes yeah, sense. He, yeah. But um, we have a really weird, what I believe was an Akira reference, because he's sitting there eating, like, what looks like pills, but it's candy. Yep. Um, And then we get a very weird, which is probably edited out since Ken said something, I never knew it. Uh, A death in a child's movie. One of two. Three. No, two. Yeah, Yeah, they kill one. Bonk, is that his name? They kill Bonk. (laughs) Yeah. First off, you better put some respect on Henry Rollins' name next time. All right, movie. Because... You know, that's rude. But yeah, no, Bonk decides that he wants out because he's tired of following around this, you know, Joker wannabe. So Joker says, okay, you're out, and kills him. I mean, it shows, you know, he is the Joker, in a way. You know, he's still a killer with the Joker is a freaking mass murderer. Hell, he'll he'll kill people just for a joke if he can't laugh, you know, so. And he kind of did with Bonk. Bonk had it coming, though. Bonk very much to have it coming. It's also an interesting callback to, like, or interesting, like, alluding to a the other death later in the movie. But don't worry, bad fans. We'll get there. <laughs> and then there is a little part around here where you have a random guy watching the news and that when Terry is visiting Barbara Gordon, you have the same random guy who you don't know who he is come and talk to Bart. It's and a I, very important gentleman. Remember him for later. <laughs> I don't remember to even say his first name when she sees him. Nope. Okay. Nope. I mean, Which, I didn't know the first time I watched this until it was revealed. And then I was like, oh, shit. No, it's so, definitely a cool uh, way they did it, though. Oh, yeah. I really like that they had that. And you needed him to kill somebody because you needed him to show that he is going to be this, you know, that he is the Joker because the Joker kills a lot. So you needed that, I think. I think it helped. And this is when you have Bruce. Then you go back to the back cave. And you have Bruce reviewing Joker information in comparison. And that's the whole time when he asked for the suit back that we were just kind of talking about. I like it. It's all because of the Joker, because he, he's showing sadness for what happened. And he, he makes it comment about how he never should bring kids into this, like, well, which is right. Why are you taking little like because when it kind of I don't think it talks about one of the suits that's there is Tim Drake's suit. And Tim Drake was like, what, 10 years old or something when he's when he's robbing. Yeah. Yes. Up up there is uh, the Batman suit, the Tim Drake suit, the Batgirl suit, the Nightwing suit, which there is a animation error later where the suit go has a blue chess piece to red chess piece, which is weird. But, you know, out of all those, there is no Jason Todd suit. Jason Todd was in the animated series, right? No. Okay. No. They skipped him. He was supposed to be. I thought he was. I thought there was a scene with after Nightwing leaves in the and in the other animated the one that came after, which is probably the same thing when they changed the animation. I can't. Hand, I don't like it. Where had Jason Todd? Maybe that was Tim Drake. Because I thought there was a car. Yeah, scene. it was. It was Tim Drake. It should have been. Oh, they took the same intro but just changed it. Yeah. Okay. Because they didn't want to bring up the idea of uh, Tim Drake. In a child show, which is fair. You mean Jason Todd? Yeah, that's what I meant. 
Okay, that's what I figured. I mean, Jason Trad had a very rough story. He had a go of it. Well, he gets beat up with a crowbar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so much worse <laughs> happens in that TV show. All they had to do was take the crowbar part out and just make it to where Bruce thinks he dies in the explosion. It would have fit perfectly. <laughs> yep. But whatever. And this is where you then see Terry throws in the suit and leaves. But I, I, I did like it that you have Batman really questioning himself, like, you know, how how much he really kind of fucked up. I, I do like that. And how seeing the Joker unravels this man that is, you know, mostly has it together. I mean, decades too late, Bruce, but, you know, fucking go off, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that was a little odd, but, I mean, it makes sense. <sighs> but, hey. Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne, every time a Robin leaves, claims he'll never get another child and is then seen with a new child six months later, Wayne. Oh, yeah. Never have another child again. See somebody who can vaguely do a somersault. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> I'll take him. Oh, it's funny. Like when you re- when we read the later comic role, <laughs> and he has so many different, you know, different like Robins over time, like or the Bat Family. Like how many people there are now that are part of the Bat Family? Oh my God, there's so many people, and they all need therapy. <laughs> yes, but then this is when you have like Terry having breakfast with his family. A very simple scene, but it has a lot of meaning too to show like now that he's no longer working for. Bruce anymore because he got fired and he's no longer the Batman. He has time to be with his family and I gotta say his his brother has a gigantic head. Yeah, that's in my notes where like one of my notes is why are children in this universe drawn weird? I didn't get it. Like why was the head so big? And his eyes are beating. I feel like everybody in the show is drawn weird if they don't have lines normally. Mm, I mean the the mother looked norm looked fine. It was just the just the, his brother was the head was just terrible. <laughs> I didn't like it. It bothered me. It was so ugly. Nothing. No, I'm 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 hundred percent agreeing with you. That is a odd looking child and it's it's very weird. It's <laughs> almost too weird how much he looks like his brother. <laughs> it looks like they just took the same drawing and just enlarged it in different ways. Oh, there we go. Close enough. Well he's a young kid. He's gotta grow into his head. <laughs> All children are ninety percent head when they are under the age of ten. I mean I did laugh. Much. When it when it shows like cause the next part, you know, showing that now that Terry's having a more normal life, like he's he's at um, he shows his girlfriend at the club with two other girls, and she's like, "You gotta go look at," she's like, "You gotta go look at other guys." Like, you need to stop worrying about Terry; he's too busy for you, or something like that. And then Terry just shows up and he goes, "Hey, I'm here." I thought that really made me laugh, and it really fits high school too. And just because he's working too hard, oh, screw him. Let's find a different guy. No, I found it funny. It was pretty funny. Fun thing about girlfriend Dana, voiced by Lauren Tom, as we all know, Amy Wong from Futurama. That was that's fun. I like that. Makes me happy. <laughs> She's in the show too, if I remember right. Right. Yes. Okay. I don't yeah. care for her. Yes. Then again, I don't care for media. Di- I don't care for high school girls and media dictation of that of that age or some either. So fair enough. Should be noted that a lot of the uh, villains did do different roles on the show as well. Oh, that's cool. Like uh, Henry Rollins played Man Mad Stan in a few episodes of Batman Beyond. I have no idea who it is, but okay. Oh, definitely find those. Those episodes are fun. I tried to watch Batman Beyond once. I I went through a phase and I just couldn't do it because I have no nostalgic for it. Oh, foo, foo. I had the action figures. I had the soundtrack. Like I was all in when this came out I because was. the weird guitar driven dance music was absolutely my forte at the time. The music is hilarious to me, like how loud it is in this club. I mean, again, it's a club, so but again, safety. Yeah. There's no safety in this. There is before. Because this is when the the J- the Joker gang shows up at the club and they and they have a whole fight scene where Terry's fighting them as you know, he don't have yes Terry and you get his ass handed to him and they kidnap his Dana. But like there's one part where he literally cl- he jumps across things and he takes this big fake lava lava lamp looking thing and pushes it off with his feet. I mean, how unsafe is that? Some guy could just be up there like, oh, look what I can do. <laughs> Lean on it and then push it over and kill people. Yep. Dana also falls and hits like three light posts before she hits the ground. And <laughs> now that I think about it, now I can think of is that scene. And now you might going, if only there was a railing there, she wouldn't fall. <laughs> well, it's just so unsafe. Like, where are the railings? Come on. Like the stairs. I mean, there's just stairs. You just go right down these stairs. You slip. You're drinking too much. Oh, there you go. Look, man, first off, these are high schoolers. So I don't, I hope they're not drinking too much. Oh, good point. Yeah. High school. Second off, when you're young, you never think you're going to die. 
it's only once you hit like mid twenties going forward and your back starts to hurt where you're cognizant of your own mortality. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm then it's off fucking railings everywhere. <laughs> it's just funny the things I, I noticed in this movie. I'm like, huh, that's so unsafe. <laughs> but it was it's still a very good scene though. Like I, I did enjoy the f- club. I mean, the fight in the club. I do enjoy seeing Terry, you know, trying to show he can sh- hold his own, even though he's not very good at it because he, you know, he needs a damn suit. Yeah, the DDs fucked him up. I like the DDs. Or they're not in the yeah. show then normally. No, not that I remember. I want to say they're in the show after the movie. No, oh, because they're really I, good villain. I very specifically. Then again, maybe it is just for specials. I very specifically there being a scene where the Justice League goes to the future and there's there's a uh, Bruce Wayne and then the younger Batman and they're they're with the Scarecrow guy and Bruce like roughs him up a little bit or Batman roughs him up a little bit and Bruce goes you you call that interrogation I can't believe how green I used to be and he grabs his cane he goes I'll show you the interrogation and it fades to black as the Scarecrow dude screams and then the next scene this dude just giving him his like social security number and everything they don't show up again until ju- the Justice Un- League Unlimited episode. That's the only uh, thing they're in. It's this and that. Okay, yeah, see? So, that's weird. Yeah. Chucko, really- chubby guy, also comes back in that Justice League Unlimited episode. So, that's that's cool. I was just... Because I, I vaguely remember the Joker gang from Batman Beyond, but I don't remember Batman Beyond very well. Well, there was a Joker's gang. Just a different faction. Okay. So, and then you have so- you have a very... This is also a very good scene where then it jumps back to the Bat Cave and you have Ace get all upset, which is the dog, what, like Hound Dog, whatever the hell kind of dog he is. Not Hound Dog. Um, Great Dane looking thing. Yeah. You think? Yeah. But he runs after an intruder and you just hear him, you know, make that the sound as he gets, you know, taken out by whoever. And then Bruce gets gassed as he's trying to get to the antidote because he knows what's coming. Like, And then I think the Joker shows up for a second and you just see the fear in Bruce's face. I think yep. he also calls him. Like he says, he knows he's Batman. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He calls my Bruce. He says Bruce. That's all he knows it's about the Batcave. So fucking handy that Bruce was working on anti toxin for the Joker venom right at that moment. Well, the way I look at it is that because of what was happening, he started working on it because the Joker had reappeared. So I I can buy that. Oh no, I buy it one hundred percent. I just think it's fucking hilarious. You know what I don't buy? Hmm. Bruce Wayne, the multi-billionaire who is, how old do you think he is in this, 80-ish, who is the most paranoid guy in the world, Terry shows up, and the Batcave still being, like, hidden by one damn clock. (laughs) You're telling me Bruce didn't have walls or other security implements involved? It's just a clock that is blocking literally every single villain in the entirety of New Gotham? It's a nice clock, man. <laughs> I mean, the way I look clock. at it is that he just doesn't, he's not the same as he was, you know, and it's been so many years. He's probably, you know, very much out of the limelight. And let's say there were other security systems that were there, but because the Joker is who the Joker is in this, he was able to deactivate them. I guess. That's my theory. Yeah. Because, I mean, he, we'll you know, he knows that. who he is. And when you find out why, like, it makes sense that he would know how to bypass security and things. And then you get a small scene of Terry racing to Wayne Manor and, you know, he gets to the mansion, everything's broken into. And then this is where you saw like the clock that we we're talking about where he just runs by the broken clock right into the back cave. And God, that scene of going into the back cave, you just see ha 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 written all over the place. And Bruce Wayne is just laughing because he got hit with a Joker gas. Yeah. Oh, that... Not dead. Not dead. Oh, I was good. Very. And good. of course he has the antidote, but he's like so fucked up from that. And then like they show him in a bed, the next scene, like, and Barb's there, and, he, and she's like, I'm all he has. It's it's so good. It it really uh, makes you, like, feel for him. And I think it's it also good because it shows that, like, he doesn't, this Joker doesn't care. Like, the other Joker doesn't ever really want to kill Batman because that's his, you know, if he loses Batman, he loses his rival. This, he doesn't give a shit. He's like, kill him. Yep. And this is when we find out what happened in the past. And whoo! Oh, this is delicious. I love this so much. I can't count. I can probably count on one hand how many dark things have happened in a kids TV show. Probably because this has aired on TV and why I kind of have a weird disdain about this movie because I remember it being on all the time. But it gets pretty dark in this flashback. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's super dark. Oh, I love it. 
it, it's such a fucked up story too. Like when you know, and Barbara tells him the story because Batman won't. He will not tell him the story about what happened to Robin or what why the Joker, how they know the Joker is dead. And she starts off. She starts off the story saying that Robin went to go save a woman. And it shows, you know, Robin patrolling. And he looks like a little kid because he is a little kid. He's got to be, what, 10 years old or something, I think? Probably. One, why the hell is a 10-year-old? But then again, it's it's Batman. So, you know, he's he's a crook, too. Captures little kids and makes them work for him. Tricks them. <laughs> but and I, I did think it's funny how he goes to rescue and it's Harley Quinn. She pulls out the giant hammer out of nowhere and just smacks him in the face. And she really puts some stank on that, too. Like, she throws herself <laughs> into that swing. Like, I'm surprised she didn't kill him. Yeah, because he's not very big. Right, like he's 10 years old. I'm not even sure his skull is form- fully formed yet. No, not a 10. It's not. <laughs> you can recover. I mean, so, a 10-year-old can recover better from things than, like, you know, us. You break us and we'll just, ah! you know, but a 10-year-old can recover better. Oh, so that's why he chooses them. <laughs> Got it. I mean, no, I mean, isn't that a fact? So if you're younger and you take damage, like your body can, I think, can heal better because you're younger. It it, it does. Okay. It does. Bruce Wayne walking into an orphanage. I mean, your most durable 10 year old, please. Uh, durable, Mr. Wayne? Is that the word we're using today? Yes. <laughs> the last one got uh, but with the crowbar. It's such a fucked up story. Like, they're, they're, they're going back and they're talking about how Batman and Batgirl were looking for Rob and they're beating up all these people. And three weeks go by and he's still missing. And it isn't until they get a clue, which is, which is sent to them from the Joker that tells them to go to Arkham. And that's. And let's. Let's talk about that. Three weeks. Three weeks. That's a long That's time. That's an insane amount of time. I mean, don't they say if you go missing within, like, what, if you, they don't find you within, like, the first 72 hours, you're usually dead? Oh, I thought it was the first 48. Is it, it might be first 48. I, I can't remember, but I know it's not long. Like, if you don't find somebody quickly, it's usually not. It's bad. Three weeks is a long time for someone to be missing. You, you know, God. the police weren't notified either. So, so what's he um, going to say? Yeah, police, so uh, they kidnapped my Robin. <laughs> Well, Tim Drake has his own parents, right? Yes. Yes, he does. Yeah, like, Tim Drake has parents. Money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping your kid. I, I got him. He, he's on vacation with me. Don't don't worry. Here's something. Here's a million dollars. Here, don't worry about it. Don't call the cops. This feels like the same thing that happened with the church, doesn't it, Father Drake? <laughs> that was dark. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it, and it gets darker like when they get to what I call Joker's apartment. Where oh, my they go God. To the, plate, the Arkham, and he has, like, he's sitting in a, in a chair reading the paper or something, and Harley's like, Honey, you know. Jake, you're putting these, they're here. Like, yeah, he's got that wonderful, cheerful domesticity vibe going on there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, how fresh. And then he's like, we have, you know, I didn't want to, I think this is when he says, like, I didn't want to wait for a kid to, so we just got our own kid, and come out here, JJ. And then you, and Tim Drake comes out, but he's all been Joker five with green hair, white makeup, a Joker suit. Oh, just, God. Oh. And that his face is twisted into the smile. The second most terrifying scene in this movie. Oh God. And he just, the way he's laughing, first off, they used a different voice actor for uh, Joker Jr. Or JJ. Uh, they used actually uh, the voice casting supervisor, Andrea Romano, was the voice for that because they wanted it to sound so different. Because at this point, Tim Drake has been broken. Oh, yeah. It has been three weeks of torture and just psychological abuse. If you, if like they is, show us, and they even oh. show, like, they hooked him up, like, they had him tied down to a metal bed and they hooked up and shocked the hell out of him. And you know what? I- I'll give it to Tim, too, because if you look at all those, like, torture utensils on on the table that the Joker shows in that little, like, monologue scene he has, one of them's a used plunger, and my god, I would have been broken as well. Oh. Yeah, no. No, like, bamboo shoots under the fingernails, I got you. You know, electrical therapy, please, the hospital couldn't fix me, you won't either. But a used plunger that was sitting in poop water? Uh Uh-uh, nope, I will tell you whatever. And Tim does. (sighs) He builds everything. I feel like this scene would be Uh, top ten, one of the Mojo top ten videos of fucked up scenes in in children's movies. I'm pretty sure this was in something like that, actually. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I I used to watch those. I I can't do it anymore. But I'm sure, yeah, this feels like something that would be in it for sure. And then you have Batgirl chases after Harley... And Harley ends up falling down a hole. I thought she died 
And they, and they even mentioned, like, yeah, we don't, we haven't heard from her again after this. We never she found her body. Die, but that's what I mean. And then you have Batman chasing after the Joker at the same time. And this is when, and the way they show you the torture that he went through is he pulls out a whole movie and starts playing them so Batman can see what they, what he did to, to Tim Drake. Oh, it's so God. fucked up. I love it so much. It reminds me of the killing joke. That same idea. Yeah, except this is actually good. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, this scene is also so good that they also use it for Arkham Knight as well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't Arkham Knight in so long. <laughs> it's time. It's on next season. It won't be until end of next season, but it's on next season. Good. They can wrap up the series. Thank God. <laughs> and then all the DLC. I'll take a little bit, but. And you see the Batman just beat up Joker, and he just beats the shit out of him, too. Like, I was waiting for him to kill him. Oh, yeah. It, it, there's it only close. one storyline that I know of, or at least animated movie that I've seen, where that, it's the Dark Knight Returns, I think. That's where he actually kills the Joker, if I remember right. Well, Joker kind of kills himself, but... Yeah. Okay. Maybe he's like, I don't, have to, Batman gets I don't have to save you point. either. Like that? <laughs> I can't kill you, that was, I don't have to save you. That was good. That was a good bail. <laughs> It helps when they're sick. You can do a good bail when you're sick. Hey, all right. God, that movie's so good, by the way. And this is when you have a throker, <laughs> throker. Joker throws JJ <laughs> the gun and Tim goes to sh- and then, you know, Tim does the first shot and the fake little bang comes out. And then Jim is laughing because he's all been Joker fight. He's laughing. And then he shoots Joker in the chest with the gun and kills him, which is essentially just like it's a spear gun at this point. Yeah. Like it's shooting out a metal rod at high velocity. Maybe it's gonna, it could have. I mean, it's a Joker. Yeah, and it does kill but, Bonk too later. Yeah, with the Joker poison, but oh. Joker poison doesn't do anything to the Joker. But I guarantee catching that in the heart will probably fuck up your day. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine it shot him in the heart. Yeah, it's kind of that's what the placement looks like. Yeah, and then the most heartbreaking thing is that. Tim just the laughing slowly turns into just uncontrollable sobbing. It's so fucked up. It's really bad. But oh it's so god, bad. it's just so depressing. Like I'm like, this is just way too dark. This is the only thing I remembered about this movie because I watched this movie probably seven years ago for the first time. And this is the one scene that stuck with me. Was this? Oh, but it's so good. <laughs> it is. It is really good. It's just messed up. So then we go back to the future where Barb is still telling the story. And uh, she tells Terry what Tim's been up to. So Terry immediately like, all right, so I'm going to go talk to this guy now. Yeah. <laughs> and he does. This is when you see Tim repairing a dish. Terry got back the suit after he went to go find Bruce Wayne all messed up. And this is where they talk about how it's been 40 years. And Tim's like, I'm done with all that. That was, you know, that was childhood. That wasn't, you know, I grew up, I moved on, you know, I realized how stupid we were and everything like that. And it's worth pointing out that Tim Drake is voiced immaculately by Dean Stockwell of Quantum Leap fame. So I just wanted to point that out because, you know, we lost Dean Stockwell. I think it was early last year and I'm still hurting from it. Oh, I don't know who he is. I don't recognize the name. I, mean, I know the voice. You watch, uh, he does a lot of older movies because, you know, he's an older guy. Uh, you should definitely watch uh, God, what was it? Uh, Quantum Leap. Okay, I know who he is now. I him up. okay. I do like Scott Bakula a lot, though, because he's a great captain on the Enterprise. He's a great everything. And this is when you you have him, you have Terry heading to the yacht. But before he gets, there, I think you have the the Joker gang is in Price's yacht, and this is where you get the. Oh, this is where you see Terry kind of go up the side of the window. You know, he cloaks and he puts his little finger on the window and is able to hear what they're saying and record it. Look, I I don't care what kind of guy you are. If you're a grown man and you walk into a room and there's like a clown girl in your bed. You have 50, 50 odds at that point. And her twin <laughs> sister walks in. That's a 50, 50. I'm probably going to take. That was funny. How he, he confuses his, his lover or wife, whatever she was, or girlfriend for, you know, someone else. Yeah. Somebody else who looks completely different, by the way. Yeah. Cause you see um, her right after they realize, he realizes that as DD, the twins, you see his girlfriend tied up to a pole by the yacht. <laughs> Yeah, who's wearing like a white dress yes. with long blonde hair? Hey, not maybe we don't. Clown maybe he had pants. a clown fetish, and he's like, "Oh, she's finally gonna do it for me! Oh, awesome! Uh, I've been trying clown. to get her to do this for years." <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go throw up real quick. <laughs> 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 I 
Uh, hey, we can make it worse when you think about the fact that DD is probably under age, so you do have that, you know, weirdness. Too. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that either. Why? 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 <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, hey, at least he didn't Why? sleep with her. At least he finds out and they kick his ass. Okay. Yep. <laughs> but that's what I was thinking. Like, but then this is where you find out that Price did, in fact, not only hire the Jokers, but enable them to get access to the labs to get all of this equipment that they've been stealing. <laughs> Which is, it's very cool to see that, like, you know, he becomes the villain you thought he was. He's just not the Joker. Right. He's still a piece of shit, just not the piece of shit you thought he was. <laughs> and they, I thought they were going to blow up the yacht. Like, I was expecting they put a bomb in it because they say, oh, we got to go. It's going to get blown up. And I'm like, all right. And then, you know, he gets priced out of there. And the next thing you know, a freaking satellite beam comes down and blows up the yacht. I'm like, okay, I didn't see that coming. Oh, that is so fantastic. And all that went through my head was, Golden Eye. Do, 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 do. I can't remember the song anymore. Nothing. Oh, my God. No. That's what I thought. I thought the Golden Eye satellite, because that does the same thing. And then you have uh, my favorite thing about the Batman universe, which is Batman going up to the docks and there are police. And as usual, Batman going, hey, I not only did your job, here's a recording <laughs> of the guy squealing his guts out. Have fun with that. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so long, bye. Just drops them off. <laughs> I did your job for you. Enjoy. Okay. You do have a cool scene where Terry go- is in the Batcave doing what Wayne, you know, Bruce would be doing, where he's looking at information and trying to figure out where what they're missing. And then, you know, once he finds out it's not Price, and he, you know, he thought it wasn't Tim, he because Tim, the only person that would have this information, he goes back to Tim in, in a lab to confront him. Oh, wait, well, before that- he does that, though. Yes. Terry does the Batman thing. Wait. Oh, yeah, he, he has, disappears on Tim. Well, he did that moment where he realized the one thing where he's missing as he's complaining to Bruce about not being able to do that. Terry does the best thing ever. He takes out a picture of Tim Drake and draws on it with red marker only to find out that he might be the joke. Oh, fuck off. Will you leave, <laughs> you leave Mask of the Phantasm alone? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that derailed us a bit. There. <laughs> and, and then this is, and then when he gets to where I, I did like the scene where he gets to where Tim Drake is, and he goes, he, you know, he goes to grab him, and it turns out it's a hologram, and the whole thing's a trap. And like the Joker comes on and starts talking to him. Yep. Oh man, was, and he had to figure out how to get out of there because lasers kept coming out of the walls and shooting him. So of course he does some predictably Batman stuff and uses the lasers to shoot the other lasers. It's a thing. And it's just the scene where after this, he gets in the Batmobile, which I do like in this, which isn't the Batmobile essentially like the Batwing also or whatever the hell it needs to be now. Yeah, pretty much. You know, 40 years technology changed so much. So just, isn't it where he's driving down the road and getting chased by a giant laser? Yes. And I want to talk about this sequence so badly. Please. <laughs> okay. So this scene is awesome. And if you've been paying attention, you notice that this scene looks better than the rest of the damn movie. I yeah. did not notice that. It did look good, though. Like, the explosions, the way the weapon, the motion tracking is going, like, all of the exterior work looks so much better than it does than anything else in the movie. And the reason for that <laughs> is that the actual animator of the similar scene from Akira oh. was, the, was working at the studio where this movie was being made and he took it upon himself to do the storyboarding duties to one up himself from Akira. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So if you watch this scene, watch the explosions, watch the way the laser moves. Not only is it a direct shout out to Akira, not only does it look better than anything else in the movie, but I would say it tops it. That's cool. That that's actually really weird, and that is now the weirdest piece of Batman fact that I will now ever know. <laughs> like I I remember I read that like years ago, and I was like, "Oh fuck, that's so cool!" <laughs> like I just had a little geek out moment about it, and I'm very glad that I was able to bring that to the podcast. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and this is when then as he fly, I I just really that is cool. Just watch. I did not know that, but that is cool to know. But just like the whole scene of him running away from a giant, like, all I can think of is like, God, you know how much damage is being done to the city right now. 
Okay, How many calm people down, are getting Sikofia killed? Like, they are killing hundreds of people are probably getting killed by this giant laser shooting through the freeway, just taking out people. Like, no one's surviving yeah, it's, this. It's going to stop? You think it's going to stop if Batman gets killed? No, it's the Joker. You know what's <laughs> weird? I had the same thought where it's like, man... I'm sure I'm glad, you know, Bruce probably always pays for damages because look how many people's cars are being destroyed. Well, the people that got their car destroyed, they're in it. They don't have to worry about it anymore because they're dead, too. So there's no worry. Nobody, you don't need to pay when they're all dead, I guess. Jesus uh, Christ, that's dark. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, think about it, that's what I mean. They're all no one's surviving that. And that laser doesn't stop. Like you have the whole next scene where Batman, he crashes on the roof of the of the Joker factory and he has a whole scene where he's talking and fighting. And during that whole time, the laser is still going. So people are still yep. getting massacred. And it's it going cruising through, through the city. <laughs> like it's it's clearly cutting through buildings, blowing up entire structures. Yeah, like it, those are apartment buildings, probably. <laughs> oh yeah. <sighs> so, but I think you know what? Kind of self you know something. How do you defend against that? Well, you know, hey, this came up. Like in twenty, you know, twenty fifteen after Man of Steel, they would have had a scene of people evacuating. Like, Come on, guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. Nothing to mind. Then Ben Affleck would have gotten angry. Then he would have put on a bat suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then this is where you find out he brought Ace along too, and Ace jumps and bites hyena, which I I did like. Yeah, you got to bring a dog to a dog fight. Yeah. Well, it was cool to That's find Ace to doing things though too in this movie because isn't Ace like Ace the Bat Hound? Not this dog is like a super dog raider kind of something normally or in the somewhere in the comic like super friends. Oh, uh, somewhere uh, there's an Ace the Bat Hound. Yeah. Wow. That, this is what it's yeah. a reference to. Yeah, but this oh, is like oh. the third or fourth Ace the Bat Hound. Yeah. No, I don't have like one. And since Bruce doesn't have Alfred anymore, he needs somebody to help him around the house because you know he's old. So good big he dog. He just has a dog. Yeah, she's got a dog. You know, I He's swear, Alfred. Yeah, Bruce is Alfred. I swear, there's like a scene in like the ad, the TV show where like Terry does go through like the fucking uh, like Wayne Manor, and like Wayne Manor just covered in dust, and Bruce just hangs out in the Bat Cave like forever now. But yeah, I think that was the first episode. Okay. Yeah, where he breaks in or something. Yeah. Yeah. So you got Bat, you got Terry in the Bat suit taking the fight to everybody. And he found finds Tim unconscious on the floor. <laughs> and this is where the movie jumps the shark in the most annoying way. You don't like this? <laughs> no, this is stupid. I agree with you, Ken. This is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so let's break it down. And audience, you can you can side with me on this one because <laughs> this is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. So as Tim is walking around, he grabs a tool, or was it a knife or something, and throws it at Terry, and then turns into the Joker. Now, him turning yes. into the Joker is fucking terrifying. It is. Yes, it is. It, it really is. Like, the sequence looks great, and the way they blend the two voices together, it's absolutely fantastic. Like, you can see that Tim Drake is going through a lot of pain for this actual physical transformation. So how does he turn into the Joker, Mike? <laughs> he has a chip in his neck that was never discovered somehow and never, never stopped, never short circuited. You know, even all the technology, nobody ever found this little chip that you could actually see with your naked eye that turns him into the Joker. Cause he stored Joker stored his personality on a chip, his personality his DNA because Joker is a cutting edge geneticist. No, no. And no. a scientist. Now, wait, he does say that he made a bunch of people do it. So, I mean, you could always argue with like throughout bat lore. All it really takes is hello. Knock at your front door. Hello. I'm the Joker. You're going to figure out how to put my DNA in my, in my DNA into this chip, or I'm going to blow up your five-year-old school. And they'll probably do it. Uh, it's still the dumbest that he thing. found somebody to do it. I don't I don't care if he found somebody to do it. The fact that it was even done is stupid. But I'm I'm OK with it. I wish it would have been like the ship would have been completely invisible or something would have been like injected into him. I'm OK with the idea that he stored his person, his DNA and his personality on something that then eventually wakes up and takes over the person. I'm OK with that. I like that idea. 
but Ken the and Mike the the chip has has a smiley face on it. That was funny to me. Even like earlier, there's a part when they when he says where he's gonna point the laser. I think it was about to come up. It has a smiley face. Also, the three targets. So <laughs> I'm gonna call that that little chip design Iowa because it's corny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the everything about that just makes me angry. Like I don't think anybody has any idea how science works because there is no way in that tiny ass little chip. You can have enough DNA and enough circuitry to force the body into a complete and total, not only just changing the structure of the body, but changing the personality in the brain. Like, I, I got, I'm fine with science fiction. I got fiction. one word for you. Cartoon. Hey, it took 40 years for him to turn into the Joker. So, I mean, there's like nano machines slow, slowly, like, you know, adjusting bones and stuff. So nano machines is the answer. Same as Metal Gear. Same as this nano machine. Oh, well, clearly. Yes. How dumb was I? I, didn't, I, I like how he changes. It doesn't bother me one bit. I believe it for some reason. Maybe I've been watching too much Star Trek and other things, but I completely buy it. <laughs> I, I like when it happens. I don't like the how it happens. We'll say and the that. way I also took it, it wasn't just the chip. It was all like everything that they had did to him beforehand also affected it. That's how my brain does it. I'm realizing this movie, I took a lot of my brain and just changed things to make it fit for me. I'm, I'm Much like the Joker did to Tim's body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and like, and when you first find out that he's, you know, that ter- that Tim is the Joker, like, you know, he also throws something at Tim at Terry that ends up like. <laughs> handicapping him completely where he can't he can't move and he's shocked and he's useless why the joker threatens to kill someone that terry loves and he shows like oh i could i could kill you know i could kill your i forget who he threatens first oh your girlfriend at the hospital yep. i could kill your mom or i could kill wayne you know what i'll do all three and then they all make a what on the screen <laughs> smiley face a uh, smiley face fucking boo earns anyway <laughs> Of course, that's not going to happen. So because Terry still hasn't learned the lesson and shockproofed his suit, he's been eaten up by this taser claw <laughs> that he gets hey, hit with. Ace saves the day. Yes, Ace he does. does save the day in this movie, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, pretty much everybody would be dead if it wasn't for Ace. And I'm not just talking about our story, people. The whole city would probably die if it wasn't for Ace. Yeah, because the police aren't very good in this world. Yeah. And the way that he short circuits the laser is all by accident, too, where I think he just throws his or oh, when he broke, I think something got broken. Oh, when the when the when he bites him and he distracts him and he gets the thing and, and Ace bites the thing on his arm that's, you know, shocking him, it bounces and ends up falling into one little spot that blows up the whole laser, the whole control system that's activating this laser that's running through the city that is currently then starts heading towards the Joker factory. And it still just keeps going, killing everybody along the way. Yeah. What's a little, uh, structural compromise between friends. <laughs> so like one thing, I think it's whenever Joker's monologuing about the laser, there's like a weird shift tone in the music. And I swear the music sounds like parasite Eve. Like it's a really weird, like piano riff. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, it's been like almost three years since I played Paris at Eve, two and a half. But I think I think I know what you're talking about, like the opera, like that. Yeah, I can't even like I can't even think about how it sounds, but like I have the idea in my head, but I can't like vocalize it or anything. God, it's a good game. <laughs> oh yeah, remind me, your first episode was a third birthday. I forgot about that. Yeah, but I just I see stuff about Paris at Eve all the time. So yeah, sorry, you had to play the worst one. Well, actually, the second worst one in the series. It's the first worst one. Pierce Eve Two is terrible. At least it was. I, I hated it. <laughs> that's another. That's another episode. Go check that out. And then, like the whole fight with Terry versus Joker, I really like this fight. I like how Bruce Wayne talks about how like he can get into your head, and so Terry's like, "Well, I can talk too," and he doesn't. He just starts talking and getting into Joker's head and fucking with him. And he starts laughing at him. Pisses him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He wanted laughs, but not like this. Not like this. And. Of course, because we can't Spider-Man this Batman anymore. Terry is just a snarky, sarcastic asshole when yeah. he really wants to be. I think it's it's a good way to show how much of a different Batman he is. So I like to think that it's really just really interesting on how, like, you know, I, I may not be a 
a League of Shadows member, but you know what I am? An 18-year-old teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and I can talk so much shit, Bruce. Well, also, he breaks, like, at one point, Joker goes to run for the door, and he breaks the handle on the door so the Joker can't leave and traps him in a place where they could both could die. <laughs> yeah. Against Which is funny, up. because normally it's the Joker doing that type of shit. Yeah. See our episode on Batman Mask of the Phantasm for more. <laughs> It just does a very good job of really, like, how personal it gets, too. Because, like, he threatened his family. He threatened all these people. So he's like, I'm going to fuck you up. And he really does. Like, he he messes up Joker. And there's that one point with Joker where he throws a table on Terry. And he starts choking the hell out of Terry. Yep. Just I mean, no, no jokes, no weird weapons. Just, nope, I'm going to murder you now. And also choking someone to kill them. I mean, that's kind of a very personal, like intimate way to kill someone too. Like that's the idea that I took it, that that's what this movie was going for. Where the Joker has grenade, he has bombs as you see in, you know, throughout this fight, but he's like, fuck it. I'm just going to, like, he's so angry. He's just going to kill him by choking him to death, which is not fast. Even weirder. Yeah. Even weirder. Like right when that scene happens, where I think he throws a table at him, you kind of see Terry's arm extend in a weird way which is very noticeable as to why what happens next. Yes. Oh, yes. Because as Terry's getting choked out, he decides that, nope, I'm going to win after all. And he slaps Choker in the neck with the <laughs> joy buzzer. <laughs> yes. <sighs> which also brings up the question, how durable was that mole? At any point, could Tim have accidentally washed it off in the shower? <laughs> Well, that shocker thing was pretty powerful because you get shocked the dog. It's like a huge burst that shocks it. Yeah. So my guess like, is that it was very powerful. Yeah. I don't know how they got that much electricity into one thing, but. 20 years in the future. If, they got flying yeah, if we're, if we're assuming that, you know, one microchip can make somebody physically change. Sure. Why not put an entire power plant in a joy buzzer? I don't <laughs> care anymore. <laughs> Uh, the way I look at it is, I mean, they have flying cars. Their technology is so far ahead. Like, I can buy it. But he fries the chip, saves everybody. Tim becomes Tim again. And everybody's happy. So well, the, yeah, there's oh. a line of dialogue in this, which I think is funny because it's hasn't been, it wasn't written yet, but it does come up in the Batman Beyond comic. There is a scene to where Terry does ask, hey, Babs, whatever happened to Dick Grayson? Oh, well, you see, 40 years ago, Dick was gone. And I walked up to Bruce and went, hey, Bruce, I have news. What is it, Barbara? I uh, So uh, Dick came home four weeks ago. And he's like, yes, Dick has been home for uh, four weeks. Yeah, I, I just found out I'm pregnant. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, I'm six months pregnant. What? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and that's why Dick's mad at Bruce. So in the story, Bruce knocked up Barbara? Yes, and she loses the baby due to stress, but... You'll go permit me, I'm going to scream into a pillow right now. <laughs> why would you even put that? Like, it doesn't need to be in it. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I mean, that's even worse than what the killing joke is. Oh, God, don't even get me started about how they always treat Barbara as a fucking uh, bat family fleshlight. Oh, <laughs> fucking hate it. <laughs> oh, fucking hate it. You're not wrong. I'm not. Oh, that, okay. That's, that, that was not what I expected to go on in this episode. All right. Oh, but we're not done yet. Box. We're not done yet. We still got some movie. No, I know. And this is when you have Nana Hartley comes out and bails the twins. Oh, Lord. And so this is where we find out that. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those listening, Joe, Joe broke Ken again. He sent, he posted the image from the comic that mentions how it's his baby. Oh, and fuck's sake. Again. So the DD twins are in jail and their grandmother comes to bail them out. We find out it's Nana Harley, which means Harley's been alive this entire time, but just once she got her ass kicked and thought the Joker was dead, went on the straight and narrow and had some kids who had some kids. I can buy that. Up, Granny. I, I can, can buy, buy that once Joker is gone, she's able to be more normal. Yeah. Which is, you know, nice. Uh, you also have um, Terry and Barbara. God, I'm never going to be able to think of Barbara Gordon again in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> you have them meeting with him in the hospital 
And, you know, the usual, oh, I didn't know. Thanks for saving me. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Terry goes to leave, and Bruce finally comes back to talk to Tim. So that's great. You think at some point he would have resolved it, and, you know, but nope, not Bruce. Nope, nope. <laughs> Stuff it down. Which it does fit Bruce Wayne. Yeah, it does fit oh. Bruce Wayne. And, and especially in this universe, Bruce Wayne. And the yeah. last scene you get is Terry soars off as Batman. And music with very aggressive guitars. And that's the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Woo! We made it, y'all. Oh, I do have one question before we go on to Shelf Stacker Box. On the cover of the poster, why is the Joker face green? <laughs> for the poster. Because for it's the movie? future and everybody has cool lighting. Because he's not green at all in this. I don't understand why he did that. Like I've always been he's curious never been about green that. Green in anything? I don't think. No, I'm no. wondering if it was like a somebody like they. That's what the plan was, but then they just didn't do it, and whoever got like, oh well, it's on the poster. Who cares? I, I'd like to think it's because they wanted to add color. Because if you just had the Joker's big fat white face on there, it would look weird. Yeah, and it wouldn't go well with his teeth. And yeah, oh. yeah. So I'm fine with it. Actually, it. I think it makes it stand out. I think it's a pretty cool look. Uh, we oh. should mention that this was written by Paul Dini, uh, who was the basically wunderkind behind the Batman animated series originally. Oh, there's um, also they also made games for this movie too. Did they? Yeah, there's a Game Boy One, a PS One, one and sixty four. Well, son of a bitch. Uh, the PS One and N sixty four games, I think it's N sixty four, are just like beat 'em up type style games of that era, and the Game oh, Boy Game Boy Color one is. A Game Boy beat 'em up looking style game. Oh, fantastic! I kind of want to play them now. Yeah, I don't remember. If we, I don't think I mentioned it, but this movie was not theatrical release. Like Massive Phantasm, this was just released in on TV and VHS right. or VHS and or it, type, whatever. Hell. It did not do well. Nope. That's that's to play it nicely. Another way to say it was it did absolute dog shit for money, and there was going to be a sequel. No, if this movie had done well. Oh, but it didn't. And that sequel ended up, a lot of the ideas from it were used in the episode of Justice League Unlimited that we keep talking about. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. So, we still kind of got it. I like to think, like, Batman Beyond didn't do well in general. Like, I remember a lot of people had a lot of mixed mixed feelings about Batman Beyond in general. But that's just because, you know, people always like to complain about everything. So, I yeah, that's part of it, yes. <laughs> I do know a lot of people who just didn't really care much for Batman Beyond. I'm Same. one of them. I don't understand why. I I, love, I think I, I was love. just too old in quotations. And I just, I thought I was too old for it and I didn't watch it. And I have no nostalgic for it. Like I, I at some point might go back and try to watch some of it now and see if it rings different. I, I would I, recommend I, it. Also, I love the animated series and it wasn't, I, it wasn't the animated series. I think a lot of people had like a hatred towards things that weren't the animated series for some reason. Yeah. Well, one of the complaints that I could see people have with the show, which is fair, is mainly at the end of the day, just like, oh, hey, you know, uh, we're going to have replace Bruce Wayne's an old man and we're going to replace him with like a kid in high school. Like if they had honestly made him like a kid in college, it probably would have brought down some of the hate. But I can see why a lot of people didn't like it. Yeah, fair enough. Also, something to point out, I do believe that Batman Beyond was running at the same time. As the animated series? Huh. Well, that doesn't seem like a good idea. Like, I feel like the animated series was going on for a while after. Um, The new Batman Adventures, which is the end of the animated series, it ended in 99. So okay, right before. So, and Batman Beyond right. started in January. So it was only running for a little bit. No, it ended the same month that Batman Beyond started. There we go. No, oh, that's not great. I don't like Batman, the new Batman when they, you know, do like the last season as a different art style. I do not like that at all. It really bothers me. What, what's your least favorite? Fair enough. Uh, real quickly, what's your least favorite design? Mine's a Poison Ivy. <laughs> I don't remember a whole lot of them. I just remember I didn't like the way Joker looked. Oh, yeah. Well, they made his eyes black. I, I, I never watched much of much of it. I just watched. Like, I remember trying to watch all of the Batman show at one point before I met my wife. And I just watched TV that I downloaded on my computer. And <laughs> before oh, all the streaming yeah, services. wasn't that wasn't that the one where his Joker's skin was like weirdly like gray? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah, I didn't care for that. <laughs> That's why I didn't do so well. 
it wasn't i just remember it really bothered me and i have never went back to it and i have no plan to well, i think we should go to there shelf is. stacker box now finally uh, <laughs> and now go first so i wasn't so when we watched this when we picked this movie i wasn't sure what i was going to think of it i i had vague memories of it but i have no like nostalgic for this movie because the first time i watched it was probably seven years ago but i enjoyed it i i did enjoy it it's a good film i think it's a decent standalone film even if you don't really you don't know a lot. You, you don't need to know a lot. You can still enjoy this film, I think, just fine. So I'm going to put it on a shelf, and I'm glad that we picked this at the last minute just to throw it on there, and I found two people who wanted to do it. Uh, what about you, Joe? You kind of also cut out there a little bit. It's okay. It should pick up on Skype, hopefully. It should, hopefully. I'm going to have to go with, like, probably shelf. It's not that bad of a movie, and it has a lot of issues, but it's also not that bad either. I feel like, if, if anything, it goes on the shelf like along with like, oh, we're going to binge the entire Batman Beyond series because that itself isn't that bad. But like going in on this, knowing like a little bit about Batman Beyond, it's not that good. OK, what about you, Ken? Oh, you know me. I'm going to have to put it on the shelf because I do love me some Batman. I also really, really love the body horror aspects of this movie, the psychological terror of, you know, everything that goes on here. Like this is one of the darkest things ever done in a batman any kind of home video release and i love it i love it so much okay and if you want to hear more batman i can tell you a list of other batman episodes we've done on the show batman the court of owls comic 33 batman haunted night comic 32 batman arkham origins episode 139 batman massive phantasm film 18 definitely go check that out Batman Arkham City DLC, Harley Quinn's Revenge, Mini 13, Batman Arkham City, Episode 118, Batman Arkham City Comic 24, Batman The Killing Joke, Comic 22, Batman Arkham Asylum, Episode 97, Batman The Long Halloween, Comic 17, Batman Death of the Family, Comic 8, Batman Hush, Comic 3, and then the Batman Game for Genesis, Episode 3. All right. A lot of Batman. I think it's probably just about time that we just start classifying them, not as comic episodes or Batman comic game episodes. episodes, just Batman episodes. And if you enjoyed this episode, please go find all our other content. If you can't find what you're looking for on Spotify or it doesn't go all the way back, you can find everything on Podbean that has a whole the whole catalog of all the episodes that we've done, which is over 280 something at this point. So there's a lot. Also, I want to give a shout out to our awesome intro and outro courtesy of Helena at Hell Hashfear. You can follow her on TikTok. She made our music. And if you enjoyed this episode, definitely please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. We are on YouTube. Only audio, but we're there if you have listened to your podcast on YouTube, because some people do. It's definitely better for work, easier <laughs> than in your job. And we have a Patreon. For as little as dog, you can go vote in our Patreon polls. Definitely go help us out there. It keeps the lights on. And I think that's everything I need. Oh, yeah, and I want to give a shout out to my buddy, Bill Tucker, who did the MCU with me, which is finished. Uh, go check out his podcast, The Gamer Looks at 40. I think that's everything I need to say. So we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody.